how would you suggest of other faiths? Two religions, Christianity and Jew in detail in the Quran, God commands the Muslims on a common premise. God says, say and not take one another we believe in the same God Isaac and, uh, and Jacob, Solomon, da Suleiman, David, Moses, Jesus. This is another verse Allah said, been sent down to you, and what was sent down before you, and are certain about the hereafter. So we believe in the Bible. between any of them and Allah says uh, the, the prophets and Allah gives the names of the prophets Abraham Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and what Moses and Jesus and all the prophets were given by their Lord we do not differentiate between any of them so that means there are many uh, fundamentally these three divine religions are the same of course there are changes because there have been made some changes uh, after the um, original revelation. However, fundamentally, there are many commonalities. For example, uh, the oneness of, oneness of God, the prophets, hereafter, the belief in the hereafter, and the moralities, the understanding of justice, are all the same in the three divine religions. So, the way we approach the people of the book is exactly this way described in the Quran, because Allah says, in other words, they are not all the same for the Christian uh, for Christians and Jews people of the book Allah says they are not all the same there is a community among the people of the book who are upright they recite the signs of Allah throughout the night and they prostrate they believe in Allah and the last day and join the right and forbid the wrong and compete in doing good they are among the righteous so Allah says there are very sincere believers between Christians and Jews and they believe in Allah and they do sincerely worship God. So that means, of course, we are very have very much in common. And the way we approach is also, said uh, Allah says, only argue with them in the kindest way. Allah says, in the kindest way. So we have to be very kind to approach them. And also in the Quran also said, monasteries, churches, mosques, and the synagogues, where Allah's name is mentioned much, are the places to be protected by Muslims. And this were exactly the way that our Prophet uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, and, uh, protected the people of the book during his time. He was in very good relations, including the Medina constitution. And the people of the book were protected by our Prophet, and the churches and the synagogues were protected by our Prophet and the four Khalifa after our Prophet, actually. So the problem what is happening today is the enmity and hatred against the people of the book is not from religion but from the radicalism and extremism which has emerged uh, among Muslims, Jews and the Christians and this is incompatible with the Quran. There is no harshness and angry speeches, angry style in the Quran. Allah always orders to have a very gentle style. Even Moses السلام, was sent to Pharaoh and Allah says speak with him gently. So this is the style of uh, a Muslim that has to be and there is no enmity and hatred between people of the book and this is exactly what ordered in the Quran and this is exactly what happened at the time of our Prophet all right so um, I, I, uh, are you saying that um, there will be a unity of religions uh, when the world comes to an end or 
Yes, since we are living in the end times, and we are living in the end times according to Islam, according to Christianity, and according to Judaism. So this is the time where religious morality will prevail the world. In the 20th century, Darwinism and materialism controlled 99% of the world. And because of the Darwinist concepts, struggle for survival, survival of the fittest, and the strong individuals crush the weak individuals, and the conflict is the cause of the progress, these concepts were taken from Darwinism and applied by Karl Marx into communism, Adolf Hitler into fascism, and it has emerged as anarchism, racism, and terrorism, and more than 350 million people were killed. Muslims separated, and there has been enmity and hatred between the Muslims, between the Christians and Jews, and 350 million people were killed, cities were destroyed, World War I, World War II, and half of the world became communists, and more than 150 million people were killed in the communist regimes. But now this is the time for religious morality. And uh, according to uh, the um, Torah and according to the Islam, the King Messiah of the Torah, which is expected by the Jews, is the same person with Mahdi of Islam because the evidence is given in Torah and Islam is the same. And also Christians expect the return of Jesus, peace be upon him. And also return of Jesus is stated in the Quran, in three Quranic verses. Allah tells us that for example, I will give one example. In other words, I seek refuge in Allah from a curse. Satan, Allah says in the Quran, Jesus, peace be upon him, is the sign of the hour. Sign of the hour. 2,000 years ago, of course, was not a sign for the last day because our prophet came after Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. And it is not stated in the Quran for our prophet, sign of the hour, but for Jesus. So he must return back. And there are two more evidences, actually that I can uh, actually read the, uh, these verses. And in other words, Allah says, But Allah said, Jesus, I will take you back and raise you up to me and purify you of those who are unbelievers. And, Allah says, I will place the people who follow you about those who are unbelievers until the day of resurrection. Now, we, we should think, for this to happen at the time of uh, uh, the first coming of Jesus, peace be upon him, there were only 12 disciples who had faith in Jesus, peace be upon him. But Allah says, I will place the people who follow you above those who are unbelievers. In order this to happen, religion to prevail, Isa uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, must return back. And this is the time for his return. And another evidence from the Quran, Allah says, there is not one of the people of the book People of the book means Christians and Jews. There is not one of the people of the book who will not believe in him. Him he is here, Jesus, in him before he dies. That means he must return back because at his first coming, people of the book, Christians, uh, the Jews of his time, did not believe in him. Actually, they tried to martyr him. But now it is the time for his return. And we understand from the signs stated in the Hadiths that he must have returned. He must be alive right now. He must be on action. So this is the time for with Mehdi, King Messiah of the Jews, which is the same person, and Jesus, peace be upon him, religion will prevail in the entire world. And now we can see the evidences for this because the world is changing. All the signs stated in the Hadith, such as economic crisis, the uprising in the Muslim countries, and also increase in the natural events of the world, and other signs, they all came to be true, more than 200 signs. That means we are living in the end times. Mehdi must have come, and Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him, must have returned, and the religion will prevail. Okay, so you are saying that there will be one religion before the end of the world? That is, yes, stated in the Hadiths, actually. With the return of Jesus, it is described in the Hadiths that uh, Christians and also Jews uh, will, with the finding of the original Bible and the Torah, there will be one religion prevail the entire world. And uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, will be the vizier of the Mahdi And they both together will rule and govern the world. And there will be peace, tolerance, justice, security, love. And all the bloodshed will be stopped. Our Prophet says in the Hadiths, uh, Mahdi will not even drop a sing shed even a single drop of blood. And no one, uh, not even one nosebleed. And he will not be able even awaken the sleeping person. 
And so it, uh, uh, Isa, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, and Mehdi will stop the entire bloodshed and the wars. And the weapons will be eradicate, eradicated, and there will be justice prevailing the entire world. And these are, days are very close by, in mostly 10 years, according to the signs. And uh, God knows the truth, uh, we will see these days. Mm. Okay, uh, Dr. Um, Baboni, um, what is your uh, opinion on uh, terrorism around the world? Okay, um, the reason why there is terrorism is not, this is not from the religion, but for irreligiousness. The reason is, there is no killing innocent people, according to the Quran. It is haram, and it is one of the greatest sins. Allah says in the Quran, Surah al maida verse number 32. Allah says, I seek refuge in Allah from a cure Satan. If someone kills another person, that means an innocent person, if someone kills another person, it is as if he had murdered all mankind. Allah says, if you kill one innocent person, it is like killing and murdering all mankind. And Allah goes on, and if anyone gives life to another person, it is as if, if he had given life to all mankind. So killing innocent people is one of the greatest sins. And Allah promises endless torment to the murderers. So terrorism, which of course violence committed against non-military targets, innocent people, is haram. So somebody cannot be a Muslim and terrorist at the same time. So somebody cannot be Christian and terrorist at the same time. And somebody cannot be a Jew and a terrorist at the same time. Because according to all three divine religions, killing innocent people is unlawful. Unlawful means haram in Arabic, but it's unlawful. So, of course, the source of terrorism is from irreligious philosophies and Darwinism, which denies the existence of a creator and claims that humans owe their existence to chance and they are animals because Darwin legitimized violence by putting in the subconscious mind of the people that you are an animal, you have to fight for survival. If you are strong, you survive. If you are weak, you get eliminated. So you have to crush the weak individuals. And conflict is the cause of the progress. And these ideas were taken from Darwinism and applied into communism by Karl Marx. Karl Marx said, this for Charles Darwin's book, he said, this is the basis in natural history for our view. And in another, he wrote to Engels. And then they applied these concepts into communism as struggle between classes, between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie the struggle between classes. And by Adolf Hitler, he, these ideas were applied as struggle, as fight between races. Adolf Hitler said, take away Nordic Germans, nothing will remain but the dance of apes. So he saw, he claimed that all other races except white Germans are monkeys, apes, and they have to be eradicated to get a pure German race. And during his time, 85 million people were killed. And Darwin was a racist himself because, according to Darwin, there is higher animals, white European men, he said more evolved animals, and these more evolved animals will exterminate, will eradicate, kill all lower races, such as, for example, blacks, Turks, Aborigines, Indonesians, Pakistanis, Indians, uh, Eskimos. According to Darwin, they, they were lower races, lower animals. And higher animals, by the European man, he said, in the descent of man, will exterminate all these lower races. And these ideas were taken by uh, uh, Charles Darwin and immediately applied as colonialism uh, all around the world. And then the World War One and the World War Two, and then the terrorism and the violence and anarchism has emerged. And the 20th century has become the bloodiest century in the entire human history. So Darwinism brings this idea of conflict. However, according to the three divine religions, there is no reason for conflict. But for example, Allah says in the Quran, in one verse, I created you from a man and a woman and made you into tribes and nations just to, make, just to know each other. So different, being, uh, different, heaven, different races and nations, according to Allah, is just as a culture, color, to know each other. And then Allah says, the most superior one in the sight of God is who have most, most sincerity, it's taqwa in the Arabic, most sincerity. So whoever is more uh, sincere believer is more superior in the sight of Allah, but not according to the race, not according to the nation. There is no such superiority or inferiority. However, Darwinism
the violence because Darwin legitimized people were uh, killed and slaughtered in the 20th century. The final question is on Islam and uh, democracy. Should Muslims accept democracy around the world? In fact, democracy, but uh, the, I'm not talking about uh, elections or a uh, system of elections, but democracy, the freedom of thought, freedom of speech is in the essence of Islam. Because in one verse, Allah says in the Quran, <clears throat> there is no compulsion in religion. That means you cannot force anybody to believe in anything. You cannot force anybody to be a Muslim or to pray or to believe in anything. It is unlawful. But of course, you tell the uh, you give the evidences uh, to falsify wrong claims, pagan religions such as Darwinism and materialism. For example, you give the scientific evidences. Uh, for, uh, such, uh, for instance, Darwinism is a pagan religion, and even a single protein to emerge by chance is impossible. That defeats Darwinism completely because other proteins are required, and there are 350 million fossils. That shows us there are no transitional forms as Darwinism claims, but the species appear abruptly complete and perfectly formed. These are the scientific evidences which refute Darwinism. And of course, as a Muslim is obliged to give these scientific evidences to eradicate Darwinism intellectually. But you cannot force anybody. If somebody believes in Darwinism, you cannot force him because Allah says there is no compulsion in religion. But Muslims have the obligation, are obliged, that's an order from Allah, to enjoin the right and forbid the wrong. That is their obligation. And this can only be done with scientific evidences, with science and evidences from the Quran and uh, from the Hadith, but with scientific evidences, only intellectually. So, of course, that means there is a freedom of thought according to the Quran. For example, Allah says, if the idolaters, the mushrikun, mushrikun are idolaters, unbelievers and idolaters, if they ask you for Iman, Iman means protection, Allah says in the Quran, if the idolaters, unbelievers ask you for protection, Muslims have to bring them to a place where they're going to be secure. That means they, if they have to risk their lives in doing this, they risk their lives. So idolaters are under protection of Muslims. People of the book, they are also has to be protected. In, in other verses, for example, Allah allows Muslim men to allow chaste Christian wives uh, to marry Christian wives and to marry Jews, Jewish wives, chaste women. And also, Allah says, their meal made you halal also. So we can socialize with the people of the book and eat their meals. It's also made halal to the Muslims. And that, of course, shows us we have to treat them very nicely. We have to treat them people of the book. We have to treat uh, idolaters also. We have to protect them. Muslims are, must be very compassionate and lawful against other people. And there is, again, there is no compulsion means there is complete freedom of thought. So as we see, real democracy, freedom of thought and speech is in the essence of the Islam. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for speaking to me tonight. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure and honor for me, and and for our listeners, I uh, and uh, I, I recommend them to go into the website www.harunyahya.com, harunyahya.com, and they can download any of his books free of charge, and the documentary is free of charge. He has three hundred books translated to more than seventy-five languages, and some of them are against Darwin, the scientific refutation of Darwinism. Some of them are about the unity of religions, for example, the return of Jesus, many other topics, and they can uh, read free of charge and give uh, get more evidences. Thank you very much. We will try that, but I wish we could spread more of his works in Ghana on radio and television. Yes. Maybe we'll talk about that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, yes. and I hope to be with you again. And there are many other topics, so I sent... Uh, my salam and also salam of uh, Mr. Harun Yahya and he says hello also to all, all our listeners in Ghana. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brother.